Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host, Anthony Rivaro, beside me. I hope you guys enjoyed our 2022 NFL draft coverage taking a look at every single draft pick for the Giants. Of course, we'll be diving into their film individually in the coming days here. But today's episode, we simply wanted to give each individual uh, draft pick from the Giants um, a, a simple grade. You know, it's it's a little bit premature to do so. And we will obviously dive into them in a more detailed manner. But we want to take a look at um, grading them in terms of a, of a scheme fit perspective. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, we can't really determine what their value is, how they're going to be used, but we can take a look and see what their skills are and how they, you know, fit to the scheme and what kind of grade we give them based on that factor alone. So I think that they will probably will grade out well, considering the Giants took a very much scheme related approach um, in this draft. F class, there were a couple guys that I was a little bit intrigued by and, and maybe even concerned by. Um, but ultimately, I do think that Joe Shane took a very strategic approach and, and something that they obviously had worked on. And I know a lot of people disagree with some of their picks, mainly because they weren't the top names on the board. Uh, maybe I would have preferred Sky more over, over Wandale Robinson or whatever other draft picks. But at the end of the day, I think they wanted to fit specific roles. And I do want to talk about why they did that and, um, you know, the individual players and what we would give them grades on. But, Anthony, before we dive into this interesting segment today, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing really good. I think the Giants had a great draft class. You know, you kind of mentioned some of the players that they drafted. Might not have been the top names on the board, but it seems like the Giants play this very specifically going for strategic scheme fit. So, of course, you mentioned Wandale Robinson. We'll get into him. We'll give that pick a grade in just a little bit. But you talk about how he wasn't necessarily the best player on the board but the Giants had their eyes on him. They liked the way that he fit into their scheme to play a very specific role. And it seems like that was the case for a couple of these draft picks on day three as well. So the Giants played this draft very specifically. They wanted to make sure that they got players that fit right into their schemes. You know, kind of building that scheme in year one, it's really important to get guys that are perfect fits. And I think that's what the Giants were trying to target. Of course, in round one, we're going to give good grades for that. Everybody knows the Giants really killed the first night of the draft. And overall, they did have a very good draft. If you go on to the Giants.com and you take a look at this article, it says experts grade the Giants uh, draft class. There's a lot of A's, A minuses. There's a lot of, you know, uh, analysts saying that this, this is the team that changed the most after the 2022 NFL draft. The Giants had the most improvements. So, again, it's a really good draft class. Joe Shane did a phenomenal job. Or so it seems, you know, we'll never know until it's all said and done, maybe three years once we get to see these players on the field. But, you know, after taking a look at this body of work from Joe Shane just a couple of days after it's been complete, it does seem like he did a very good job, got really good value and got some scheme fits to help build this team in his first year with the New York Giants. Yep, that's exactly right. So let's dive right into the first player here being Kayvon Thibodeau. Now, obviously, we can already say that Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal are going to earn A-plus grades for obvious reasons, right? Kayvon Thibodeau easily could have gone number one overall, easily could have gone top four. Um, the Jets ultimately went for the defensive back over the pass rusher. They ended up getting Jermaine Johnson at like 26. The Jets, as I said yesterday, had an unbelievable draft. They had A-pluses across the board from every big uh, analyst. So once again, they kicked serious ass. What they're doing over there is... I, I swear I would love the Giants to try and do the exact same thing. Of course, their quarterback situation is a little bit different in terms of, you know, Zach Wilson's going to his second year and Daniel Jones. They just declined his fifth year option. So there's a big question mark there, but maybe the Giants are looking to build up the roster, set the foundation, and then inject the quarterback. Um, they'll have plenty of money to do so next year, whether they go for a free agent or they go for, um, you know, a, a rookie like a Bryce Young or a CJ Stroud. But Kayvon Thibodeau specifically is an intriguing player for many different reasons. And mostly because the dude is six foot four and 256 pounds and has an unbelievable first step. He is electric when it comes to his snap, his uh, his reaction timing when the ball is snapped. If there's anyone, you know, that that really reminds me of that just insane snap, OCU Minora was one of those guys that would react almost instantaneously. Uh, to the ball being snapped. Kayvon Thibodeau has a similar skill and the ability to get that first step, and he is so quick that he can often beat his 1v1 battles just based on that first step. Um, it, it, he's at 256 pounds. He does it at a level that should be for players much lighter, like a Nick Bonito, for example. Um, his frame, obviously, is perfect for setting the edge in the NFL, and he's incredibly flexible and bendy. Um, he has everything you want in, in, in a pass rusher. You know, the statistics obviously weren't exactly where you want them to be last year after the 10 sack uh, freshman performance back in 2019. But when you look at him and in, in his tangible skill set and, and his charisma, honestly, I 
think he's going to become a leader on this team. He has the flash. He has the charisma. Um, you know, he even said like his whole brand kind of thing during the draft, like that's done. He wants to just learn the playbook. He wants to just get involved. Michael Strahan's mentoring him. He has a great coaching staff and Andre Patterson coming from over from Minnesota, helped develop Danielle Hunter and Everson Griffin. This dude is in the best hands possible when it comes to coaching. And he's in the best hands possible with Michael Strahan mentoring him. Um, I would be very surprised if Kayvon Thibodeau didn't didn't end up becoming an elite player for the Giants. The only thing holding him back could be injury, knock on wood. But this is an A-plus uh, selection because he's a perfect scheme fit. Aside from being the best player in the draft at number five for the Giants, he's also a perfect scheme fit. So those two coming together equal A-plus, and it's not even close, Anthony. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's an A-plus pick. Kayvon Thibodeau, in my opinion, was the best player on the draft board. The Giants got the best player available, and they also got a player at one of the two top positions of need. And the other position of need we're going to talk about in just a second. But the Giants' two biggest needs was right tackle and edge rusher. With their first two picks, they addressed those, and they addressed them perfectly. With the best players available on the draft board falling into both of those positions. The Giants got really lucky the way that the draft board fell, and they capitalized on it. And Kayvon Thibodeau, as you mentioned, his get-off is insane. I think that we should do a film breakdown on him sometime this week, really dive into him, show everybody what he's really made of, where he really shines, what his strengths truly are. But he is a great player, all pro potential. He's got all of the traits, all of the tools. You know, if you go and you take a look at his pre-draft uh, player comparisons, a lot of the times you read raw Miles Garrett, right? He just needs a little refinement, but he's got that kind of potential. That playing style is very similar, and the athletic ability is very similar to a guy like Miles Garrett, who is arguably one of the best players in the NFL at his position. Kayvon Thibodeau does have that type of potential to be one of the best players in the NFL at his position. He's a great pass rusher. He's a solid run defender, and he's got a lot of tools in his bag to get after the quarterback. I loved Kayvon Thibodeau pre-draft. Now that he's on the New York Giants post-draft, I love him even more. I can't wait to see what he's able to do with the New York Giants. Yep, absolutely. So I think most people will agree that A plus is a reasonable grade. Um, Evan Neal, however, another A plus, right? Evan Neal could have gone number one overall. He could have gone anywhere in the top five. Honestly, the fact that he slipped to seven is a freaking miracle. And the Giants walking away with him is just an unbelievable turn of events. The, the, it felt like our luck shifted in that moment over the past four years. Like all of our bad luck, all of this crappy uh, situation that we've been dealing with, finally just coming to a peak and just turning the next chapter. Evan Neal, six foot eight, 345 pounds. The dude is a muscular a behemoth of a man. Like, you don't find many people at that height and that weight and at his – he doesn't look like a fat guy. He's not. He's super cut, super muscular. His tangible traits are out of this world. Um, he ranked in the 97th percentile in weight and 92nd percentile in height. He did not run the 40-yard dash, but he has an excellent frame. He's the strong, one of the strongest offensive linemen in this draft class, if not the strongest, and he's unbelievable explosiveness. He's going to be an elite run blocker on day one. Um, he is a physical specimen with already great fundamentals and technique. So adding on top of that uh, professional diet, professional uh, workout routine and professional coaching, you're going to get a player that's going to be a, an instant impact guy on day one. Um, and looking at him, he's the only one of all the top three offensive tackles that had right tackle uh, experience, 765 total snaps, whereas Ikem Okonu and Charles Cross had a combined five snaps of at right tackle in their entire collegiate careers. Evan Neal enjoyed 1,073 snaps last year, 423 in run blocking, and 650 in pass blocking. He gave up two sacks and over 1,000 snaps, so pretty damn good. And I'll even throw in, like, he had a good balance of pass and run blocking. So he is coming from a scheme that is very NFL like, right? A lot of NFL teams, you know, run and pass, like pass probably about a 60% clip. That's really what they were doing at Alabama. Um, they ran the football a lot and he kicked serious ass. This is a player that's coming that is going to make an instant impact. He's going to make Nate sort of like a pile of dirt. And Evan Neal is now a towering, like he is like the freedom tower to me right now. And, you know, Nate Solder is like a small garage that had nobody's touched in 15 years. So I'm really excited to see how Evan Neal makes the, the transition to the NFL and how much better he gets um, with good coaching and, and, uh, and even adding more muscle mass to his frame. Um, absolute A plus like that couldn't have gone better. Anthony, what are you thinking about Evan Neal? I mean, I wanted Evan Neal at five. So when the Giants were able to get him at seven, yeah, A plus. It's a grand slam in the first round for the New York Giants, getting those two blue chip prospects with their fifth and seventh overall picks. I mean, Evan Neal was good enough to be the fifth overall pick at a time. People were talking about him being a top three pick um, at, at, you know, maybe a month ago, right? 
Now Giants are able to get him at seven along with Kayvon Thibodeau at five. Both of those players at one point or another were mock draft to be first overall picks within the last three months. And the Giants are able to get both of them with their fifth and seventh overall picks. Both of those picks are A pluses. The value, the ability to fill positions of need, and also just get some of the top talents in the draft class. Pound for pound, Evan Neal, the way he's shaped, his strength, he is one of the best athletes in this draft class at his size. And he is truly phenomenal. And you mentioned that his experience at right tackle is what separated him from Charles Cross and Ike McClonu. He was the perfect scheme fit for the Giants and the perfect positional need fit for the Giants because he has right tackle experience. If he was an exclusive left tackle the same way as Aquonu and the same way as Charles Cross, well, then he might not have been the top player on the Giants draft board at that position. But since he has all of that right tackle uh, experience, he is the best player for the Giants to draft out of those top three tackles, or he was. And so when they were able to snag him, you, you really just have this vision now where on the left side of the offensive line, you have Andrew Thomas at left tackle, and you know he's going to be good. He's already started to develop into one of the better young left tackles in the NFL. And now you have this vision of right across the line, opposite of him, right tackle, you have Evan Neal, the six foot eight powerful human being that can maul you in the running game, but is good enough to get it done in pass protection as well. He's got all the tools to, to develop into one of the best right tackles in the NFL. It's a beautiful vision, and it's one that has finally come true for the New York Giants. They have two good bookends on their offensive line, very young, very talented, and the Giants are in a really good position going forward to protect the quarterback and start moving the line at the running game. Yeah, and and, and to throw that in there, to throw another uh, idea in there is that, yes, this is the best pick for the Giants. and It's an A-plus because now they can properly um, evaluate Daniel Jones in it- Daniel Jones struggles this upcoming year, you know he's done. Like, he's toast. There's no way um, he's going to end up becoming a franchise quarterback when you've given him this much support on the offensive line. You still ma- maintained a lot of your playmakers on offense. And Saquon's coming off a year after – now he's going to be two years after his ACL tear, so he's going to be fully healthy. Um, but why is it really a great pick? Because if Daniel Jones fails and the Giants bring in a rookie quarterback, he's going to have a stout offensive line to build around, and he's not going to have the same bad habits – um, developing early like Daniel Jones did. You know, he's going to be in a good scenario where he can really stand in the pocket and be confident. Um, and I think that's going to be a huge difference maker for a rookie quarterback if that's what ends up happening. But heading over to round two, this is where things get a little bit interesting. This is where the, the draft becomes a little bit of a question mark for the Giants, and there may be some concerns. So obviously they went out and they drafted Wandale Robinson out of Kentucky. Wandale Robinson ended up transferring from Nebraska to Kentucky. It was more of this kind of space receiver Um, a lot of his receptions came on screen passes and then when he went to Kentucky he really became this all-around slot receiving threat why is this a good pick two reasons one there's no guarantee Sterling Shepard's going to be able to start the year um, you know actually playing so the Giants now have another slot receiver in Wandale Robinson that can fill that slot role while Sterling Shepard is out another reason Kadarius Tony's proven to be injury prone up to this point so having another guy that can fill that role on an every game basis and and supplement any injuries to the slot position with Kadarius Tony or Sterling Shepard and Shepard's only going to be here for one more year so Rondell Robinson will essentially replace him after that um that's a huge benefit now I give this grade a B minus because I think that they could have got him in the third round. I don't think he was going to be picked in the second round by anybody. He might have even been there in the fourth, but I'd say maybe I'd rather I I can feel pretty confident in saying that I think he would have been there in the third round. The Giants probably could have got a better player in the second round. Um, but the reason that I'm giving it at a B minus, which is still a decent enough grade, is because he's a perfect scheme fit with the, what the Giants are trying to do. And Brian Dable said as much. He was like, Wandale Robinson is going to fit exactly what we do on offense. He is a great player after the catch. If you get him the ball in space, he makes things happen. And the more I look at Wandale Robinson, watch his tape, you look at Saquon Barkley, Kadarius Toney. They have a lot of players who can take a take a pass to the house or take a ball to the house at any given moment. If you give these guys four or five touches each a game, four or five receptions a game, eventually one of them is going to break it big. And they're going to put your offense in a good spot. Um, you always want to have like big playmakers like that on your offense. The Giants have three of them with Wondell Robinson, Saquon Barkley, and Kadarius Tony. I wouldn't say Kenny Galladay is much of a big play threat as a really great uh, like security blanket. You can just throw on the ball and he'll go up and get it, and a good deep threat too at that because of his frame. But I think Wondell Robinson adds another element of like versatility and uh, electrifying playmaking play where like how on earth can you possibly man cover Wondell Robinson and Kadarius Tony? Like you're talking like Kenny Galladay has the CB1. You're talking Kadarius Tony. 
Tony as the CB2, and then Wandell Robinson, the CB3. Like, uh, Wandell Robinson and his shiftiness against a CB3 is going to be a total mismatch. I mean, Sh- Sterling Shepard is going to kick the shit out of CB2s and CB3s when he's healthy again. You know, like, they have a lot of great man coverage beaters on this team and a lot of good route Runners, you know, so Wanda Robinson B minus, I think, is a fair grade for him because I think he could have been there in the third round. But I do think what the Giants are going to do with him is going to be extremely unique and special, and they're going to make sure that they capitalize on his strengths. Anthony, uh, what is your initial impression of Wandell Robinson? Also, I'll t- toss the number four you speak that he had a thousand three hundred thirty four yards last year and seven touchdowns. He definitely kicked some serious ass last year in the SEC, and like when you're going up against top talent in the SEC and you put up those numbers, it's definitely worth noting. Definitely worth noting the production that he was able to have in his conference. Um, Wanda Robinson, talented player, but I am going to give this a pretty poor grade. I'm going to give it a C minus, maybe a D plus somewhere in there, just because of the value of the draft board. Now, he had a fourth round projection by the draft network, by Pro Football Focus, by pretty much all of the big outlets. He was projected to go in the, uh, he's a day three pick. And the Giants took him pretty early on in day two. So I'm going to give it a lower grade just because of the value of where he was drafted. Now, that's not to say he's a bad player because I'm not evaluating the player or giving the player a grade. Right now, I'm just trying to give the pick a grade. And if we're talking about the value extracted from each draft pick, Giants' first two picks were both A-pluses because they got two top five players at five and seven. So great value on both of those. But they got a top 125 player at 43. So the value there is not the best. And I understand what you're saying, Alex, with, in terms of him being a scheme fit, in terms of him being able to do something very specific for Brian Dable's offense, also doing something specific for the way Mike Kafka likes to run his offense. And I like all of that. And I think that there can be some good production uh, from Wandale Robinson as early as his rookie season because of the way he fits into the scheme. So I really like all the skills that he brings to the table, albeit they are a little bit similar to what Kadarius Tony does bring to the table. But I do think Kadarius Tony does it a little bit better. But those are the type of receivers that clearly the Giants want in this offensive scheme. So I think that it's a good player to have in this scheme. But in terms of extracting all of the value possible from every single draft pick, it was not the best pick. And it's going to get a poor grade from me personally, just because I know where he was on most NFL teams draft boards or most NFL analysts draft boards, which was, you know, day three. And the Giants took him early on with their first pick in day two. It was a shocking pick. It was one that really confused us because we didn't think the Giants were going to go receiver that early in the draft. And honestly, they probably shouldn't have. And if they were, there were better names to go with, in my opinion, better prospects to go with in round two at the receiver position granted maybe not the best scheme fits i think the giants got a very specific player here to fill a very specific need in their offense but wandale robinson at the end of the day is a screen pass catcher he's an underneath guy he's kind of just a catch and run most of his yardage that you just mentioned was fabricated because it came through screen passes so he just caught a pass in the backfield he's not actually producing downfield or getting open with route running he's catching passes and then running upfield from catching them behind the line of scrimmage. So those kind of stats, when someone has inflated receiving yard stats like that coming out of college, that can be a little bit concerning because it could show that maybe their production wasn't truly their own and it was scheme built production. Although it does sound like the Giants are going to use him with scheme built production. So I like Wandale Robinson. I want to see him succeed. But personally, right now, just based on the value of the draft board and where this guy was projected to go and where the Giants took him, I'm going to give it a D plus C minus somewhere in that fringe grade area, probably a D plus, but that's not to say, give it two years. Wanda Robinson can turn into one of the best players in the NFL. You know, that's always possible. And then it's an A plus, but right now, just based on where he was projected to go and where the giants took him, you have to evaluate the value of that draft pick. And you do have to give it a pretty uh, low grade in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's totally fair. I'll throw in two additional points that it's totally possible that, Mike Kafka from the Chiefs had saw him last year or saw him like um, before he joined the Giants and knew that the Chiefs really liked him. Maybe they knew, maybe he knew like we don't want to pay Tyree Kill or we don't, you know, we can't afford it or whatever the hell. And he maybe he knew like they're going to get rid of Tyree Kill and we know for a fact that they're going to be targeting uh, Wondell Robinson because he's a kind of a, I mean, he's nowhere close to Tyree Kill, but at least he has a similar skill set. Like he's very agile and quick, can make things happen after the catch. In addition to that, Look what Buffalo Bill, look what the Bills did. They went out and stole James Cook from the Giants, who they wanted James Cook a lot. Maybe they were scared that the Bills were gonna take were gonna take him too. Like there, there's definitely maybe that they they had him highly graded and they were just scared. Like they, they were like, we really want this player, but we're, we're not willing to wait until the until the third round because maybe they gets maybe he gets picked earlier. At the end of the day, like if you see a guy 
and you're like, okay, you know what? I think this guy is going to be really special. I think that he could be uh, one of the more underrated players in this draft. And, you know, good offenses look for players like that. There's not, there's no like, there's not too soon of a time for them to go after him, right? But on the alternative side, I think that Sky Moore is a better player right now. I think Sky Moore out of Western Michigan um, is going to kick ass for the Chiefs. And he has that like agility and really in, in quick style of play. I wonder if the Chiefs would have taken. Um, Wandell Robinson, if if Sky Moore, if he was still on the board, but like they went with Sky Moore instead, like who knows? It's, you know, it's a what if game. But ultimately, like you said, two years from now, we could be saying this is an A plus pick. Uh, but for now, I think I give it a B minus because I, I do think that he has the skill set to be a really great player. I'm not really looking at the draft board right now. I mean, a lot of people had Malik Willis going in the top 15, so like the draft boards are never like totally uh, fault free. So I think that I give I, I think a B minus is a pretty fair grade. Gives him the upside, gives him the potential to to kick ass. Um, but it's also like um, ju- you know, objective uh, objective. Um, being objective about the draft pick in general. Uh, but let's move on to the next player out of UNC, Joshua Azudu. Um, this is a player who can be an instant starter in the in the third round. Uh, you know, I think that Shane Lemieux and Max Garcia are going to compete with him. But at six foot four, 308 pounds, he has really good, uh, really good feet. He's quick. He can mirror. He's going to be a good guard for the Giants. Um, you know, the Giants spent a lot of time evaluating UNC players, and they came away really impressed because they ended up ending both guards. So I thought that was really, really interesting. The Giants did that. But Joshua Zudu, I think, is going to win the starting job this year. And I think he's going to end up being next, starting next to Andrew Thomas. And I'm going to be happy about it because getting a third round value who has a lot of upside, I think he's he is still needs a lot of development, especially with his hands. Um, but he's athletic. He's a big guy. He's smart. And he's a good, he has a good character. So I, I'm really excited to see what the Giants pull off uh, with Joshua Zudo. What do you think, Anthony? Yeah, I like this pick. I'm going to give it a, um, you know, C plus just because it's not like they got some tremendous value here. I think they got decent value. Uh, Joshua Zidu, I do think, has the traits to become a starting offensive guard one day in the NFL. Not saying he's going to be a day one starter. Alex, it seems like you think he's going to start this year. I mean, maybe he'll get some starting games in there, but I do think long term, you're hoping that he turns into a starter in year two, year three. He's got those traits. He's got the ability to do so. um, And I like this pick. He's not, you know, he wasn't the best player on the board. You know, he was projected to go later than the Giants took him, but they they filled a need, right? They need an interior offensive lineman and they found one. So for that reason, I give it like a C plus. I think it's a good pick. It's not a great pick, so I'm not going to give it anything higher, but it is a good pick in terms of the value of the draft board. Again, Joshua Zidu, I really like him. I think he's got some great trades can develop into something potentially a little bit special here. So I like the draft pick and the selection. There were a couple other names on the draft board that I liked more, which is why I'm not going to bump it too high on the grading scale. Again, Chad Muma, you guys all know I was obsessed with Chad Muma in the pre-draft process. I really liked him. Linebacker could have been really good for the Giants. But then again, thinking ahead, the Giants did get a linebacker a little bit later on in this draft that I also really like. So I like this pick. C plus for me, nothing too crazy. But this is a player that I think has the potential to develop into a really good, really good uh, starting offensive lineman. Yeah, so I don't even think I dropped my grade for Joshua Zudu. I think I'm going to give him um, a B because I think he has the upside to become a solid starter. Um, but like you said, there may have been some guys on the on the board that may have been a little bit better in terms of offensive guards specifically. But, you know, this is a guy who has the upside. So a B is pretty fair, I think, in my opinion. The next player on the board, the Giants took Cordell Flott out of LSU. Um, I've heard really good things about Cordell Flott, but the thing is, he is a slot cornerback. He is not a boundary cornerback. He um, is not going to kick out outside. He's going to spend a lot of his time inside. I think he's going to be a developmental player. The Giants have Aaron Robinson. They have Darnay Holmes. I think Cordell Flott kind of just develops for the first year or two behind the scenes. Six foot, 175 pounds. The dude is wiry. He's He's got some decent height, but he is very skinny. He's not a great tackler. Um, because of that, but he's, he's still aggressive. Like he still puts it on the, on the field. He leaves it on the field. Um, I think that ultimately he's a fighter, right? He plays at a hundred percent every single play. I really like that about him. Um, you know, he goes for the football. He tries to get some fumbles. He has good discipline and coverage. Um, I just think that he needs a little bit more size and, and, and development. Like his, he took a huge step forward from 2020, 2021. I think he allowed over 600 yards in 2020. And then he bounced back and gave up like 
less than 300 in 2021 on a good amount of targets. So I think when you're looking at him, like he took such a big developmental step at 20 years old. The Giants said, you know what? We like that about him. He works really hard and he has the athletic traits. And if we give him a little bit more size, he could be a good player for us. So I think I'm going to give that pick a B plus because I see the upside there with him. And I think that um, I, I do. I do think that he's going to end up becoming a pretty solid slot corner for the Giants with the right coaching. The problem is it could be B because I think they need to go. They needed to go with an outside corner and they waited way too long to do so. So I don't, it's not that I don't like Cordell thoughts. I do like him, but I think they probably should have went with a corner a little bit earlier. That's kind of like, you can make the argument that the pick they spent on Wondell Robinson should have been a cornerback. It should have been Andrew Booth. It should have been somebody that can make it, uh, you know, compete right away at boundary corner, Anthony. Um, so what are you thinking about Cordell Flots? Flot. Yeah, I like Cordell Flot a lot. I'm going to give this pick a B. I think that he's a good scheme fit. I think he's a super aggressive cornerback, one that's got very developmental traits and tools. And again, when we talk about draft picks, we talk about should the guy, Giants go with this prospect, should they go with this prospect? Well, you want the guys that have the highest likelihood of developing into a starter, right? And he has some traits that means he's able to be developed. And a lot of that is his speed. He's got great speed. He plays the game very aggressive, which you always love to see with corners. If you if you draft a cornerback and they're super conservative, it's going to be very hard to break them out of that habit and get them to be aggressive. Cordell Flott's already very aggressive. He likes to punch the football out, right? He likes to go for fumbles. He likes to lay out on the line and try and break up passes. Like he, He's got all those little traits that you really like. He's coming from a good school, LSU. LSU is DBU. They always crank out good uh, defensive back prospects. I like Cordell Flott and what he's able to provide to the Giants and Based on different draft boards, when you take a look at, you know, they took him uh, with pick, what is this, 82, 80, 81. They took him with the 81st overall pick. So I think there's decent value to be had from that uh, position. And I think that they got good value because Cordell Flott, it seems like, was going to be a top 100 pick. And they got him at 81. So it's a solid selection in my eyes. I think it's good value and it fills a position in need. The Giants need more defensive back help. There's going to be another defensive back in this draft class that we're going to talk about. They needed more corners. They needed more safeties. James Bradbury is still on the roster, surprisingly. We'll see if he remains on the roster. Maybe they release him. Maybe they make a late trade for him. Not really sure. But they do need more cornerback help regardless. Cordell Flott is corner help. Whether he's a slot receiver or an outside or a slot cornerback or an outside cornerback, they got a good cornerback, and I like him. He's got good traits, and I think he can develop into a starter. So again, good pick. I like Cordell Flott. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the next player on the on the list here is one of my favorite of this entire draft class, Daniel Bellinger. Um, from uh, San Diego State, the Aztecs uh, tight end. Did not know much about him when we first got him. A lot of people, you know had the names Jelani Woods, Isaiah Likely. I love my guy, Jeremy Ruckert. Um, but all of those guys were off the board by the time the Giants were ready to pick. Charlie Kolar was still there. But they went with Bellinger. Uh, Bellinger. And ultimately, this dude is a dominant run blocker. The Giants have not had a great run blocking tight end since Levine Toilolo. And he can't catch the football. He's, he's pretty much useless in the receiving game. Bellinger is going to offer you support in this receiving game as a good security blanket underneath, but he has a lot of untapped potential as a downfield uh, runner too. He is fast as hell. The guy do guy ran a 4.62 40 yard dash at six foot five and 253 pounds. Um, I do. I really do like him as a player. I think he's going to offer Daniel Jones a lot of great um, security underneath. Um, you know, looking at his actual his actual like numbers, his broad jump, he ranked in the 93rd percentile, 77th percentile. He was above average in the three cone. He was about average, a little bit above average in vertical jump and bench press. Um, really big hands, 99th percentile with 11 inch hands. The dude is like does not drop the football. He hasn't dropped the football all year last year. He didn't even drop the football once in 2021, 4.2% uh, career drop rate. He is a stud when it comes to catching the football, um, and he uses that big frame to get open too. Really great blocker. He's physical as hell. He's not the most refined route runner, but if you're going up against linebackers, all, you can create a little bit of separation at the top of your route. That's all you really need. The guy has, has plus speed for a player of his size. He's going to be a good receiver too. With the right coaching and development, Andy Bischoff helped uh, develop Mark Andrews. This is one of my favorite picks in the draft for the Giants. Uh, Bellinger could end up becoming an absolute stud for this team, so I'm giving that an A plus. Yeah, I'm going to give it a, a B plus. I don't, I don't think it's too amazing of a draft pick. I really like the value. He was a fourth round projection. They got him with the in, with their fourth round pick, so I think the value is good. Wasn't a lead. It wasn't like he was, you know, a second round projection. They got him in the fourth round. Again, I want to grade these based on the value of the pick. 
but I do like Daniel Bellinger a lot. And I think that he's got the potential to be a starter, as you mentioned, Alex. Very sure-handed, makes an impact in the run blocking game. And he was used in a very specific way um, in college where he was put into a scheme to kind of be an underneath guy. His average depth of target is very shallow, so he didn't really go downfield much. But if you watch the way he was used, there's a lot of like swing passes and screen passes, which you see a lot from the Kansas City Chiefs offense with Travis Kelsey. So again, in terms of being a perfect scheme fit, it looks like Mike Kafka was trying to emulate some of the things that made Travis Kelsey successful early on in his career and get a player that can do those things in Daniel Bellinger. So I really like this pick. I give it a B plus. I think there's good value and I think it's a great prospect that has a uh, good potential to become a starter. So B plus for me. All right. I like that. Um, next on the list is Dane Belton out of uh, Iowa, I believe. So Dane Belton, interesting player, safety. Um, I, I, I think that Dane Belton, when you're looking at him as a prospect is definitely developmental. He's a ball hawk, uh, but he can serve a good purpose for this team down the line. Uh, a lot of people really liked this draft pick. He's got some good size to him. Um, I, I think I would probably give this pick a B, like average. I don't think he blew anybody out of the water. He's six foot one, two hundred and five pounds. He's fast as hell, ran a four four three. So that's something to really like about Belton. Um, but you know, I think he could probably serve as a good gunner um, immediately for the Giants on special teams and really work his way into the defense over time. Um, but you know what? I think that with kind of this hybrid style, aggressive cover one. Uh, defense that Wink Martindell does run, having enough safeties is is definitely a necessity. And I think that if he was put, if they had to use another safety, if they injuries or whatever, um, they could throw Belton in there and he would do a decent enough job. But I think that right now he's best probably used as a gunner because of his speed. And I think that's kind of what the Giants were targeting here um, in the fourth round. He can be used on special teams immediately, but he could become a, a legitimate impact player down the road with the right development and time. Um, he's a pretty good hitter too. He's a good tackler. So I like that about him as well. He's pretty aggressive, good eyes and instincts. Um, what are you thinking about Dane Belton? Dane Belton out of Iowa. Really like this pick. I'm going to give it a B plus. Um, he was the 112th best player on uh, pro football Focus's draft board. He went 114 to the giants. Very good value there. That's almost exactly where you want to draft that player. Um, and in terms of other people's draft boards, some people had him even higher. You know, he had a really good uh, consensus going into the draft and the giants took him at a really good value spot um, here with their selection. And I really like Dane Belton. He also played a lot in the slot, so he's got some positional flexibility. I think the Giants are definitely planning on playing him at safety, but he did play in the slot quite a bit, and he's got the ability to do both of those things there, um, kind of play safety, play slot, move around on the Giants' defense, be that little chess piece. We're kind of similar to what Xavier McKinney does, but Xavier McKinney more in the box type, and I think that Dane Belton more – ranging free safety ball hawk then getting into the slot to lock somebody down tight so i like dame belt and think he's got really good tools he's very quick uh he likes to hit and i think those things as you mentioned will make him a good gunner to start off but they can develop him into hopefully becoming a solid starter or maybe just some sort of contributor on the defensive side of the ball at some point again you just want to see really good tools on these fourth round fifth round picks these mid-round guys day three picks you just want to see good tools that can be developed and i think dame belton's got all those good tools to be developed yeah, I mean, look, when you have guys that are developmental pieces that you don't expect to start right away, the most value you can get out of them is on special teams. So I think that's a really good point to make. Um, the next guy the Giants drafted, Michael McFadden, um, is a really interesting player, right? Michael McFadden is a perfect scheme fit for Wink Martindale. I'm going to give him a B because I think that, you know, the, there were some maybe better players on the draft board, but because of the scheme fit, it's a good pick for the Giants. Um, Micah McFadden, you know, he's a guy that's six foot one, 240 pounds. He's a little bit undersized, but he's just made of pure muscle. So that's definitely great. He had 58 total tackles last year. He didn't miss 16 tackles, um, but he played a lot in run defense, had some coverage snaps, 272 coverage snaps, but you're not expecting him to be in coverage very often. That's kind of more for Darian Beavers. We're going to talk about in a minute, um, but I do like, uh, what he did at sometimes he had a couple of down games, a couple of good games last year. Most of his best games came back in 2020. Um, but I do think that he fits the, the scheme perfectly. He can rush the passer. He has some good athletic traits. He has a, a above average 20 yard shuttle above average three cone. He's quick. He reacts nicely. Um, but I do think in a blitz heavy scheme, like Wink Martindale's, he's going to be a perfect fit. And he can get out for the quarterback really pair nicely with Blake Martinez. Anthony, what do you think about Micah McFadden? 
I really like Micah McFadden. This one, I'm going to give an A minus. I think the Giants got good value here, and I think they got a really good player that fits perfectly into their defensive scheme. Again, a blitzing linebacker, great pass rusher from the linebacker position, which is exactly what Wink Martindale requires of his linebackers. He had a good um, fifth round value, and the Giants, that's about where they got him. So, you know, you got to be happy with that. They got good value in this draft pick. This is exactly where they wanted to draft their linebacker, and this is where they got him. Uh, this is. Um, a good value pick. And again, like I said, the pass rushing, he hits well. He knows how to shed blocks, get after the quarterback. He's got elite athleticism in terms of his speed. His uh, 10 yard split was one of the highest out of this draft class. So you really see that show up on the tape when you take a look at some of his film and you see him pursuing the quarterback. His closing speed is incredible. He'll be able to get to the quarterback from behind, be able to get to the quarterback when the quarterback is going out of the pocket. Those kind of things that, that McFadden can do are really special and makes him really valuable in Luke Martindale's defensive scheme. Yep. And the next player on the list is DJ Davidson out of Arizona State. DJ Davidson is going to fit one purpose for the Giants, and that is stuffing the run. Six foot three, 327 pounds, full of meatball. Um, he is basically your defensive tackle. The Giants uh, got rid of Austin Johnson. Um, they don't have Danny Shelton anymore. They have David Moa, who is the projected starter at this point, but they wanted to add another defensive tackle who can go in there and basically on the early downs, just plug those a gaps. That is what his job is. Davidson. I do not expect him to be starting this year, really making much of an impact, maybe just special teams, developmental guy in the back end for now. Um, but that's really it. He's, he's, he's a good base. He's big enough. He's a good size guy. He can, uh, he can react quickly He has good feet. So I think when you're looking at him, um, this is a guy who's going to need a year or two to be, to be able to make an impact as, as a potential, just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, play one play two type of run stuffer. But I don't think that this warrants anything more than a B minus, uh, in my opinion, I think that he had a seventh ground round grade and the giants got him in the fifth round. Um, I'd even say maybe a C plus honestly, uh, for this one, I think that they probably could have got someone a little bit better, but they needed to add some more defensive tackle, uh, you know, help to the position. So that's kind of how I see this, Anthony. What do you think about DJ Davidson? Yeah, personally going to give this pick a C. What I think of DJ Davidson is that he's a decent nose tackle with traits to develop, hopefully, into a run defending starter, right? He's a two down player that the Giants drafted. Um, he's not anything too special. He's not going to do anything really productive in the pass rushing department. He's really a guy that you just want to be in nose tackle and plug up the gaps in the running game. Now, that's not the most valuable position, A. And B, his draft value going into the draft was projected to be seventh round, and they took him pretty early in comparison to where his value was. So I'm not going to give this too high of a grade, but I'm also not going to give it too low of a grade because I do think he's got good traits to be a two down run stuffer. And it was a major position of need for the Giants. They needed to get another nose tackle in there they didn't really have one on the roster austin johnson left danny shelton i mean he wasn't very good anyway and he's not back so they did need to get an interior defensive lineman this is the one that they liked this is the one they targeted they took him in the fifth round that's okay you can kind of take some chances in the fifth round so they got their defensive interior um they got their nose tackle with that pick with dj uh bellinger so i like him um there with that pick decent um selection dj davidson sorry that was the name i screwed it up but i like him as that player i just don't think that he had the best value considering where he was projected to go and where the giants took him so i'll give it a c all right so on to the next player we got two left here marcus mccaffin um Another offensive guard, I believe he's the other offensive guard from UNC. So the Giants went out and said, let's go get both UNC offensive guards. Very interesting. He's obviously the worst of the two um, alongside, you know, Joshua Azudu. But McKeffin, six foot six, 340 pounds, massive human of a man. He's like a mountain um, a developmental prospect. He ran a five, three, one guy can barely run. You might as well put him in a wheelchair and wheel him down the 40 yard line dash. Cause that's basically as fast as he was going. Um, <laughs> when you're looking at him as a prospect, he's going to need time. This is a guy who I do not expect to be making much of an impact uh, moving forward. You know, maybe two years down the line, he can serve as an adequate backup, huge guy. He's, he's good strength. Um, you know, that's what you expect when you get a guy this big. It's just oh, just monstrous amounts of power. Um, he does have some decent technique, and bull rushers will not get through this guy. However, he is so big that he will get beat by more athletic interior rushers, so there's that. Um, I don't expect him to be anything special. Um, I think Joshua Zudus are going to be end up becoming our starting left guard. But hey, if Marcus McKethin can end up becoming a good backup, maybe the starter down the line, who knows? But a good backup is an, is plenty of value 
um, coming out of the sixth round or rather the fifth round uh, back end of the fifth. So I'm fine with this pick. I think I would give this a B minus. Um, clearly, they like those UNC guards. But Anthony, what are you thinking about uh, McKethan here? Yeah, McKethan, I'm not too crazy about this pick. I'll just give it a C because, again, they needed more interior offensive linemen, more offensive linemen in general. They just needed more depth, and they got it here. So they got their offensive linemen. Um, they got a couple earlier on in the draft that I think are better prospects that are going to do better things for the Giants, but at least they got one here to be at least a backup. Uh, hopefully can develop into something, but more than likely than not, he's going to develop into a decent backup for the Giants. So I like that. Not sure if that was the best value pick. Again, his draft projection was not as high as where the Giants took him. They did reach on a couple of players in this class, but they also got some really good value with a couple of other players in this class, like the next guy we're going to mention. So I'm going to give this a C. They got some value out of it or, or some decent value because they got an offensive lineman. Offensive linemen are always valuable and they needed an offensive lineman. So they got somebody to develop, hopefully into a starter one day, but more, more likely than not, they just got a decent backup here in the uh, back end of the fifth round. So I can't complain too much about that. So I'll go ahead and give it a C. All right. Well, the last pick of the draft, Darian Beavers out of Cincinnati, linebacker. This could be a steal, guys. This is one of those picks that I really, really like. Darian Beavers, I think I would go with an A- minus here. Um, I can't believe he fell this far. A lot of guys had him in the top 100 of their 120 of their draft boards. He ended up going all the way in the sixth round. So with their last pick. This is a dude that is not going to be a liability in coverage. He never allowed a touchdown during uh, his entire collegiate career. He's He doesn't have like the most athleticism in the world, but he's athletic enough to be a good run stopper, good reactions. He racked up a, some good numbers with Cincinnati last year too, had some, some decent games, especially against Alabama. Picked up a couple sacks along the way. Um, this is a guy who I think could end up becoming a starter for the Giants. He's a pretty well-rounded linebacker. He can play the run nicely, good enough in coverage. Um, I think two, three years of, of, of development and you might find this guy starting for the giants, you know, he, or at least as their at linebacker too. I genuinely feel that way. I think Darren Beavers is a steal. He has an, enough good qualities. Like Micah McFadden is a, a great blitzing linebacker. Darian Beavers is a good coverage linebacker and he can play the run. Well, he missed a lot of tackles, but that's technique based. You know what I mean? Like if you can, if, if they can get his technique better, his form better when tackling and he eliminates that problem, he's going to be a good player. And I think he can make an impact on special teams immediately. Anthony, what is your first impression of Darian Beavers? Really like Darian Beavers. Now, this is a pick that I think the Giants kind of got a grand slam out of because the value here was solid. I saw some people, there were some draft boards that had him in a top 100 and the Giants took him all the way in the sixth round uh, or yeah, early sixth round. So 182nd overall pick. But if you take a look, I saw on one draft board, he was the 90th overall on a draft board and PFF even had him as a fourth round pick. Again, Giants getting him at the sixth pick. This is an A selection in my eyes just because of the value. Again, taking a look at all these draft picks, taking a look at where the players were projected, where the Giants took those players, how they fit into the scheme, all that stuff combined. Darian Beavers, I'll give him a specific grade once we do a breakdown on him in the future and discuss what I really like about him. But in terms of extracting all the value from every single draft pick, sixth round, getting a fourth round prospect on some people's draft board, getting a top 100 draft prospect on other people's boards, that is incredible value. I love what he brings to the table. Super athletic. I think that he could start in this league, be a starter in the NFL. The Giants realistically might have gotten two starting linebackers in this draft class. McFadden and Beavers one day could be starting right next to each other in the middle of Link Martindale's defense. I love the value that the Giants got with both of those picks in particular. So I'm going to give this one an A. Darian Beavers really like him out of Cincinnati, what he brings to the table. And I think he could even make some sort of an impact as early on as his rookie season. Which would be incredible. But guys, I'd love to see your grades below on the YouTube comment section, as always. Um, you know, we'll, I'll put the, the list of players in the description so you can copy and paste them and put your grades there. So, you know, keep a lookout for that. I'd love to see what you guys think of these guys. But I hope we gave them fair grades ultimately and, and gave you guys some good explanations as to why we did grade them the way that we did. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll be doing individual player breakdowns in the coming days. Uh, much love for tuning into our draft coverage. Really, really appreciate all the support from you guys. It means the world to us. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe below. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm -hmm.